everybody. It's a uh, great day, thanks to God, for this weather, uh, for not only Springfield, but the state of Illinois, and moving us forward past the pandemic. And uh, briefly, thank you, Governor J.B. Pritzker, and all the legislators that helped pass the infrastructure bill. A lot of you might not remember that, but we need to go back before the pandemic and how crucial that was, not only for the city of Springfield, but all our cities. That motor fuel tax dollars helped save us during the pandemic. Road projects continued, our rail projects stayed on time, and it's thanks to the leadership of Governor Pritzker that led us through that. So thank you, Governor, for that uh, passage of that capital improvement program that we desperately needed and nobody knew about the pandemic. But I'd also like to thank you, Governor, for your ushering and your leadership during the pandemic. You know, Springfield was voted number one post-pandemic place to be, along with other cities in the top 10 from Illinois, and it's due to your leadership. And this Rebuild Illinois program will help us usher and live up to that expectation of being the number one place to be post-pandemic, but also for the state of Illinois. So thank you, Governor, for your leadership, and thank you for your the legislative leaders to help keep the momentum going and rebuilding not only Illinois, but each and every community that uh, serve our great state. And with that, the true champion of infrastructure for the state of Illinois is Illinois Department of Transportation Secretary Omar Osman. And we really appreciate all his efforts. And I call him, he's just a genuine person. And he truly understands the importance of infrastructure and how it can build our lives all together. So Secretary Osman. Thank you, Mayor, and good morning. Good morning and welcome to the Illinois Department of Transportation. As mentioned, I'm Acting Illinois Transportation Secretary Omar Osman. I am. I am very proud that the governor and our honor guests, including the mayor, legislators, including Senate Transportation Chairman Senator Ram, Bill of Allum, and our labor and industry partners have come to IDOT today at our headquarters here at the Hanley Building. It is good to be here and good to see so many familiar faces together again in one spot. This agency has been my home for more than 30 years and the people who work here are very, very special to me. I wanted to make, I wanted to take a moment to acknowledge some but not all, some of the staff joining us here today. My Chief of Staff, Georgina Sias, uh, Chief Operating Officer, Shalita Das, Deputy Secretary, Doc House is here, uh, Deputy Secretary, Margaret uh, Van Dyke, and, and I know a lot of the uh, directors are here too, and I have noticed uh, the regional engineers coming over here, Region 1 engineer, Jose Rios from Schamburg, Region 2 engineer, Masood Ahmad, uh, from Dixon and, and the uh, Ottawa area, Region 3 engineer Kensel Garnett. He takes care of Peoria and Paris area. Uh, Region 4 engineer Jeff Myers, who, who takes care of uh, the Springfield and Evingham area. And I know um, Region uh, 5 engineer Keith Roberts is not here. Region 5 is uh, Carbondale and Collinsville. But I know uh, the programming engineer Kirk Brown is here on his behalf. And I also would like to acknowledge the Office of Planning and Programming staff who put in many, many hour, long hours compiling our multi-year program and many, many others. You make days like this possible and special. The last year was perhaps the most challenging year we have ever experienced in our industry. Yet, I have never been prouder of how we responded at IDOT. Governor Prisker, at the very start of the pandemic, deemed transportation an essential service, and we worked tire tirelessly to maintain safe, reliable infrastructure. I consider the work we did to keep Illinois moving, helping with the movement of medical supplies and other critical resources, if you, if you could take yourself back to the uh, March and, and, and the April time frame last year, I consider that work to be heroic. And because of the governor's vision 
and the support of the General Assembly, I am proud to say we kept our construction season on the schedule and did not cut a project. Not all the states can say that. To Governor Prisker and the member of the General Assembly who have joined us here today, IDOT and the people of Illinois, thank you. We can all sense the brighter days are ahead of us because of your leadership. At this moment today, at this announcement today, uh, this announcement today is just another reminder of that. Today, we begin to put year three of Rebuild Illinois Capital Plan into action with the release of IDOT latest multi-year program for roads and bridges. These projects outlined in our plan are more than just projects. They will be the means for us to ensure our transportation system in Illinois is reliable, safe, and provides economic opportunity for everyone in Illinois. Our guiding principles, as they, are, as they have always been under this administration, will be that we will do so in a way that provides equity and with a workforce that reflects the diversity in our great state. It remains the blueprint for how we rebuilt Illinois. Without additional delay, I would like to introduce the person who may, makes it possible for all of us, Governor Prisker. Governor. Well, thank you very much, uh, Secretary Osman. Thank you for your amazing work. I'm grateful for your leadership of this fine agency. And you have proven truly to be a creative and innovative leader in difficult times. This past year has proven that. Uh, Mayor Langfelder, thank you for your very kind words. It's always great to be with you in the capital city. There is an awful lot of construction uh, and infrastructure that's being built here. Uh, I think all of us have experienced it, seen it, felt it. Uh, and are excited to uh, see it to its completion. To Senate Transportation Chair Ram Villavellum, uh, to Senate Transportation Minority Spokesperson Don DeWitt, who's here with us, uh, to Leader Omar Aquino, Senator Melinda Bush, uh, to Senator Doris Turner, who's here with us, and uh, Representative Marty Moylan, as well as the Illinois AFL-CIO President uh, Tim Dre, uh, Diana Carlisle, the uh, president of the Springfield and Central Illinois Trades and Labor Council. Uh, Aaron Guernsey with the Central Illinois Building Trades. Thank you to all of you. I'm so glad that you could join us today to celebrate the impact of investing in our state's infrastructure. In the 23 months since I signed our bipartisan transformational infrastructure plan into law. Rebuild Illinois has already made big progress modernizing transportation for Illinois residents, and it has set the stage for so much more. IDOT, local governments, and labor leaders across Illinois have worked together and have already improved over 2,700 miles of state and local roadways in under two years cutting down commute times, saving drivers money on car repairs, making Illinois more attractive for manufacturers and distributors to locate here, and giving families an easier journey each and every day. And it's not just roads. Across Illinois, we're improving 290 bridges. We've done that so far, 290 bridges like the work done at the Murray Baker Bridge carrying I-74 in Peoria. Uh, which reopened for use last fall. Not to mention the billions of dollars that Rebuild Illinois dedicates to broadband, to schools, to airports, river ports, state parks, healthcare institutions, and innovation hubs. And in every project, we've made hundreds of safety improvements along the way, enhancing right-of-way accessibility, funding railroad crossing safety improvements, and targeting locations tied to crashes to keep everyone as safe as possible along their travels. Right now, union tradespeople, 
across the state are hard at work extending our state's leadership as a multimodal network hub for national and regional travel and freight movement, all while creating hundreds of thousands of good jobs in every part of Illinois. That includes a $173 million multi-year investment in Southern Illinois' I-57, continuing next year and running in segments through 2027. We're putting over $90 million worth of improvements into I-55 and $40 million into I-80 in Northeastern Illinois, making the road smoother and safer amidst the region's exploding intermodal logistical growth. And here in Springfield, I-55 south toward Divernon is fully open again after $15 million of repairs and another $20 million in improvements to US-51 from Decatur to Shelby County will wrap up later this year. With all that's been built over the last two years, even through a global pandemic, today we are announcing the new multi-year plan for the next six years that will reconstruct over 2,700 more miles of roads and nearly 8 million square feet of bridges. In local projects, we're investing in hundreds of miles and over 1 million square feet of bridge deck. And of course, the projects in this MYP will continue to create and support hundreds of thousands of jobs for hardworking Illinoisans across our state, bolstering our pandemic recovery in yet one more way. This past year truly has brought home how important transportation systems are, connecting the lives of our residents and our communities, delivering food products to grocery stores, getting essential workers to their jobs, and transporting patients to the hospital. That's equally true when it comes to setting forth a robust recovery for this pandemic, getting remote workers back to the office, expanding job opportunities for our hotel and hospitality and recreation workers, encouraging businesses to invest here in Illinois, and of course, attracting visitors to hit the road for a great American road trip, the centerpiece of Illinois' new Time For Me To Drive tourism campaign. And in the spirit of delivering a robust accessibility, accessible recovery to cities and towns across the state, I'm very proud to announce that 100% normal Amtrak service will fully resume in Illinois on July 19th, two months from today. Over the next few weeks, Amtrak will bring back its full long distance interstate service and the first of our state sponsored services, the Chicago to Milwaukee partnership with Wisconsin will be restored next week. And in mid July, the three routes connecting Chicago and Quincy, Chicago and Carbondale, Chicago and St. Louis, which stops right here in Springfield, will join their counterparts in running at full capacity. Tickets go live this week. This increased capacity will make it even easier for Illinoisans and out-of-staters alike to explore all that our state has to offer, supporting small businesses and small towns and their economies at stops along the way. My administration recognizes the value of these routes, which is why Rebuild Illinois dedicates over $1 billion to rail including reestablishing routes between Chicago and Rockford, as well as the Quad Cities. Planes, trains, automobiles, and even barges. Rebuild Illinois is, of course, about infrastructure, but even more than that, it's about investing in our future, supporting this generation and the next, making sure that we have good jobs and roads, to get where we're going and building a state where opportunity is just around the corner for everyone, no matter where you're standing. We've got so much more that we need to build back from our COVID-19 crisis and everything before that too. But thanks to Rebuild Illinois and the people who are standing with us today, we're well on our way. Thank you, and with that, I'd like to turn it over to a real leader, a real partner in the General Assembly, the Senate Transportation Committee Chair, Ram Villavallam. Ram.
Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Governor Pritzker, for that warm invitation and for your leadership uh, for our state through the pandemic and also through uh, this historic Rebuild Illinois capital plan and making sure it continues to stay on track. I also want to especially thank Secretary Osmond and his team. Uh, their efforts to keep us on track are nothing short of heroic uh, as we have uh, experienced so much, so many of the challenges uh, that we have uh, during the course of the last year. I strongly believe, in, in, and I did at the time when I voted for it, when I advocated for it, and I, I do today, that this plan will put us on a path to providing equitable data-driven solutions for our all communities, including underserved communities across the state of Illinois. It is incredibly important that we continue to prioritize the factors of safety, economic development, accessibility, livability, environmental impact, congestion mitigation, and increased benefits to racially marginalized communities and low to moderate income communities. The projects that the governor and secretary and we are announcing today will maintain, improve, and expand our, our transportation and infrastructure network uh, throughout the state. As chair of the Senate Transportation Committee, I am excited to see these projects implemented and to see their much needed investment in our communities. And I will just add two points. One is, I strongly believe, and I'm a little biased being chair of the Transportation Committee, that when we talk about keeping people here and bringing people here, keeping businesses here and bringing them here to this state of Illinois, transportation infrastructure, uh, what we do in that uh, area, that realm, is at the top of the list. Uh, for the for the reasons that the governor have, has laid out, I, I strongly believe that we need to ensure we're continuing to prioritize accessibility. Uh, it's all to me a matter of being uh, folks being able to get to their job, get to their school, get to the hospital, and so forth. And so, I just want to th and thank the governor and the secretary for their leadership on uh, including these factors as part of uh, the plan. And and lastly, uh, I just want to point out again that this was done on a bipartisan basis. This was done with the entire state of Illinois in mind, and I think um, that should not go unnoticed. It's incredibly important uh, we continue to work on this uh, issue in a bipartisan fashion, and we consider all the regions throughout our entire state as we move forward. And with that, and speaking of bipartisanship, I would argue that this issue um, has been one of the most bipartisan issues in the, in the General Assembly, and a large part of that credit goes to my colleagues who are standing behind me, Vice Chair Bush, Senator Doris Turner, Representative Moylan, uh, but also because uh, the minority spokesperson on the Senate Transportation uh, Committee, Senator Don DeWitt. So please join me in welcoming him. Thank you, Chairman Villa Villam, and um, welcome everyone on such a beautiful day. It's certainly my pleasure to be here joining Governor Pritzker, Secretary Osman, and my colleague, Chairman Villa Villam. Uh, and I want to thank them all for, as uh, Chairman Rahm said, the bipartisanship that has been shown since the very beginning of this project back in 2019, right up until today. Illinois is the transportation hub of America. And Rebuild Illinois was designed to bring our infrastructure back from years of avoidance and delay in taking care of it. Moving forward across this state from metropolitan Chicago to downstate and even to the very tip of Cairo, Illinois, where a major port project is underway, no stone will go unturned in bringing our transportation system back to life here in America. Modernization expansion, and most importantly to many of the people standing around us today, jobs, to all of our residents across this state. Thank you, IDOT, and particularly Secretary Osman, for your continuing efforts, continuing to make Illinois the transportation hub of America. With that, it's my honor to present my other Senate colleague, uh, Senator Doris Turner. Thank you. Good morning. So those of you that have been in Springfield over the last couple of days know what a difference a day makes, huh? We would have needed a rowboat yesterday. 
So it, it is a pleasure to stand with Governor Prisker and my colleagues as he announces this next phase of Rebuild Illinois funding. I had the great honor to stand with Governor Prisker two years ago in downtown Springfield when he signed the Capitol Bill and began this monumental process of rebuilding Illinois' infrastructure. At that time, I was a member of the Springfield City Council, and I knew what the stroke of his pen would mean to the city of Springfield and, most importantly, to my constituents that were living in neighborhoods where streets and sidewalks were non-existent. Today, that impact is even more critical for those constituents and the additional individuals and businesses that I now represent throughout the 48th District. The Rebuild Illinois Plan is the largest infrastructure investment in Illinois history and continues to have a transformational impact on Central Illinois. This financial commitment is not just about streets and highways or roads and bridges. It has a much larger and life-changing impact. Through this funding and investment in infrastructure, we are invigorating communities, promoting healthy living spaces, spurring economic development, and putting people to work in good union jobs that pay a living wage. We are truly rebuilding Illinois with brick and mortar, asphalt and cement, and the creation of healthy living experiences in your own neighborhood. And I think that um, Chairman Rahm really hit on that when he talked about the commitment that is being made in um, underserved neighborhoods and areas of the state where people um, do not have the opportunity to experience their surrounding environment in a healthy way that allows them to ha have pride in their neighborhood and invites other people to move into that neighborhood. So the creation of healthy living experiences in your own neighborhood cannot be understated and should not get lost in what Rebuild Illinois really means to, uh, to individuals on a very personal level. So thank you, Governor Pritzker, for being true to your word and making this investment, and thank you for continuing to rebuild all of Illinois. And with that, I invite the governor back for questions. Thanks, Senator Turner, and, um, and boy, that sun feels great. Uh, why don't we begin with Mike? Well, first off, I just want to ask you, you're talking about staying true to your word. A lot of people are looking at the maps right now. Will you stay true to the word and veto any part of the map that comes to your head? Well, I'll veto an unfair map, that's for sure. Um, it's important that the legislature work through their process. I've encouraged Democrats and Republicans to work together on the remap. Um, I know that that's been a difficult process. Uh, I, I have not seen a map from the Republicans. I would have, I think I would have liked to have seen what they would like to see. Um, I have not seen what the Democrats have come up with yet. Uh, so I hope that they'll, you know, produce a map soon too. Uh, and then we'll see where we go. So Governor, you said they've been blocked from this process. Like I'm sorry? Well, I know that there have been open hearings. I know the Republicans have participated in those hearings, uh, as well as many organized groups across the state and individuals who wanted to weigh in. So I think it's been an open process of gathering information to get that map put together. Governor, yes, sir. And the, uh, infrastructure and, all, and your thing last week about time to drive. That's the way to drive it all in gas. It's more than $3 a gallon. It's so fun. It's time for me to drive. Uh, and it's a great song by REO Speedwagon from Champaign. Uh, I, I hope everybody will get out this summer and drive. Um, but uh, the fact is that I think everybody here knows that uh, uh, the best way to get infrastructure going is to have people who use the infrastructure pay for it. So that was the purpose of the methodology for paying for it. Um, and that's where we are. $3 is too much. It's like 313 How about Chicago? It's even more. As you know, gas prices have fluctuated significantly over the last two years. They've been down in the you know, below two dollars at one point, and uh, they, you know, the how, where gas prices go is very much dependent on public markets. Governor, this, this project is, as John. the chairman said, it's a, a bipartisan thing. It's bipartisan because Republicans, you agreed to the tax incentives that you're not calling corporate loopholes. Uh, at least in the House, it, it was uh, part of the deal. The Republicans have been picking on you the last few days. The map, um, you know, you, you said that you would veto a map drawn by politicians. Secondly, why or why not would you support a uh, attorney general's investigation of the South? And, uh, and it's a bunch of questions all at once. So, I so let, let me, 
No, no, just I want to make sure I get to whatever it is we need to. Uh, uh, let's start with uh, your the allegation that there was some sort of permanent deal that was made in one year's budget. Um, I know that uh, Republicans supported the bipartisan Rebuild Illinois plan because they believed in it and voted for it. Um, I know that uh, the tax incentives that were created, many of them are still there. They weren't taken out of the budget for this year. Uh, back in 2019, they were put into the budget because we could afford to do that. I don't know if anybody noticed, we've had a global pandemic and it's had a real effect on the state of Illinois and in the interests at the time of putting out a balanced budget uh, we looked at all the places in which we knew we had essential services that people really needed, like schools, we need to pay for schools, like making sure people get health care, like making sure people get the services, social services that they need. And so in order to balance the budget, and I'm all about balancing the budget and making sure that we meet our obligations, we have done what we did in proposing a budget and now there's a lot of negotiation going on i'm sure there will be some changes that get made to that budget that will be satisfactory to republicans um, there may be things that aren't satisfactory but here's the important thing fiscal responsibility is back in the state of illinois well, here's what I can tell you. We've been all about transparency from the beginning. Uh, there was a U.S. Veterans Administration uh, review. There was an IDPH review of the LaSalle Veterans Home. And then I asked for an independent IG's report uh, be done. And that was made public uh, not too long ago because we wanted to make sure that we knew everything that may have gone wrong at the Veterans Home. And look, I, all I can say is that we took responsibility by taking action on the proposals and suggestions that were made that came out of those uh, reports. Uh, we have a great new Veterans Administration uh, leader in Terry Prince, uh, and you know my number one focus is making sure that we keep our veterans Governor, safe. Governor, I'm sorry, yeah, the maps, yeah. I'll come to you. Well, let's be clear that the Constitution requires that we pass a map before June 30. Um, the data that's available is, I, as I understand, what is being used by the General Assembly now. Uh, I don't actually know all the data that's being used. I've heard, you know, pieces of it, as you have. Uh, but, again, that'll be presented to me when it comes. Uh, what I want is a fair map in the end. And, you know, I, as you know, I've very, I invested in, or at least I encouraged the General Assembly to, and they did invest in a full census count. And that census count has given us a, a terrific result, uh, better than I think anybody expected. Uh, we hope that we'll get all of that data uh, when it comes, but that's coming in September. We need to do something before June 30th. June 30th is a ballot. Yeah. How long is it acceptable to not know how much taxpayer money is paid out of the Well, remember the complexity of it is that we have federal authorities working with us to identify the fraudulent activity. So it's not all like as obvious as you would think that it is. So we're working together with them. There's, you know, an effort there to get that data, to put that data out. But it's, been, it's been over six months that that question I'm sorry, what? It's been six months since we originally asked that question. I still have time there, to answer, I, I understand, but as you know, there are people who are applying even now for unemployment and people who are uh, reapplying to make sure that they can continue to get their unemployment. Um, obviously, all that data, as well as people who've rolled off unemployment, all that's being looked through, and we'll get the data as soon as we do. I don't yet think that's not my opinion that Exelon is trying to derail it. I think that they have a very widely divergent view than most people in the General Assembly do of what that energy package should look like. Uh, there's a lot of work being put in. I must say I was aware that, you know, went into the uh, late evening last night. Uh, it started very early this morning once again. Um, there's still a lot of work to do. I, I think that Exelon uh, must move closer to where the General Assembly is. 
on this uh, and to where the packages that I put forward uh, to try to bring the parties together for us to end up with a solid energy package that does the rates pay, the, does well by rate payers. Well, just back up a second. The, the, the idea here is to make sure that we have as much information as possible whenever anything might go wrong at the agency as quickly as possible. And I think that's why the alteration was made <coughs> Excuse me, in the, um, in the amendment that you're talking about. Um, because an IG report, as you know, can take quite a long time before you actually get a result. What you want to do is have somebody that's on the ground calling it out as it's happening, and so I think that was the reason that that change was made. Um, well, uh, again, I want to be clear, and uh, if you followed, there were two bills. One of them was a. Uh, I'm sorry. I understand, but there were two bills that would that would mandate uh, sex education across the, the state. One of them was a, a mandate. One of them was a mandate with an opt out provision. Uh, when they tried to put those two bills together, uh, ultimately the the better of the two options was one with an opt out provision. Um, that's something the General Assembly has talked with the advocates about. It's something that the uh, governor's office has talked to the General Assembly and the advocates about, and that's where it landed. Right, Governor, thanks, thank you.